Hi guys, following on from the AeroPress video that I uploaded previously and before we go into the using the AeroPress and the variables that you can adjust to, um, to experiment with it, we have another linked coffee related goodie right here in the form of the Hario ceramic mill. This is a compact um, a travel size, if you will, a coffee mill. Now, I've been struggling with a blade grinder for quite a few years, and the simple fact of the matter is, the one thing you cannot get with a blade grinder is repeatable, consistent results. Sometimes you'll get a decent grind, sometimes you'll get a terrible grind, sometimes you'll get an amazing grind, sometimes you'll just come nowhere close. Um, you cannot consistently repeat it. Now that's something you can do with a burr grinder, which is what this is. Now, the high-end electric-powered burr grinders are obviously the simplest uh, consistent repeatable way of doing this. However, they're also very expensive, which is why blade grinders are popular, because they're cheap. Now, blade grinders are great for chopping nuts and that kind of thing, seeds and what have you, maybe for recipes. Um, but as a, as a reliable coffee grinder, not so much so. A burr grinder is great, uh, an electric one is expensive, but a hand one is not, it's quite cheap. Um, and this Hario is a well-known name in coffee circles, uh, as is uh, Paul X, which I'll talk about the comparisons of those two in a moment. And this, like the Paul X, uses ceramic, um, ceramic burrs to grind the coffee beans, which is good news for you because it means that they, they will wear very, very well, They'll not blunt easily. There are reports of some people having used their Paulex and Hario machines for two to three years before the burrs actually start to show signs of blunting, which is a great thing. Um, and it will give you a consistent grind every single time. It will, it will be consistent and it will be repeatable, which is exactly what you need when you're experimenting with coffee. You need to know that the grind that you're getting is the same as the one that you got previously. So. Uh, it was a little bit of a toss up between this and the Paulex. The Paulex is a straight tube and it's stainless steel. That alone was tempting because I like things that are made of stainless steel, especially being into trekking and that kind of thing, because you know that they'll withstand a bit of, uh, a bit of knocking around. Um, the other thing that almost swung it was the fact that it fits into the AeroPress machine, into the hollow in the middle. Um, if I was much more into sort of trekking bushcraft and what have you than I am, then I think I'd have probably gone with that just for that reason because it would have made the pack size a bit more compact. But to be honest, it's not going to make that big of a difference um, having thought and thought about it. And I went for this one for two reasons. One, because the bottom section here is clear, so you can actually see the grind as it's coming out. This means, uh, just for example, that you can load the top fully with beans and just make sure that you're only grinding a cup's worth at a time instead of having to keep taking the base off and check the grind or the amount of the grind as you would in the Polex machine. Also, of all the reviews that are read, I would say that this one just about peaked um, over the, the Polex one for, um, for its range of adjustability. It seems to have a slightly greater range and it just seems to be more popular, especially among people that, have, that either have or have had both of them. So um, I decided to go with this one and, uh, and we'll, we'll open the box, take a look inside. Because I've kept you sitting and waiting in anticipation for far too long already. So here's the box, there's the front. Nice picture, there's the back, same picture. A little bit of information on the side tells you the material, ceramic burr, um, polypropylene body etc etc and then here you get a little bit of a diagram showing the components and, uh, and the little thing down there which shows you how to adjust it. Uh, it's a nice sturdy box so we'll pop open the lid. So here we are. First thing that comes out of the box is the actual grinder in uh, a plastic sleeve. We'll just pop that off and over here and we're going to pop that down there. The, uh, under a little folded section there, we've got the handle in a separate plastic sleeve. We'll pop that there and we'll take a look at these in greater detail in just a moment. And then we have the instructions, which is a simple trifold piece of paper, and I'll go over those in a moment. And that's the box empty. So, 
quick and simple, doesn't get any more complicated than that. So we've got the handle which is stainless steel. You can see the shape there of the, um, the hex wrench portion of it which slots onto this portion up here that allows you to turn the mill. Um, that's all stainless steel, it's got a plastic cover with a direction of rotation arrow to ensure that you're turning it in the right direction which is clockwise as you're looking at it and then a plastic handle which swivels which is nice and large with a comfortable grip for the hand. The mill itself has a polypropylene lid which is a nice snug fit, nice and clear and that opens up to show you the innards as you can see there we've got the central column that the spindle rotates on which is braced four ways across uh, so that's a nice snug fit there's no way that that's falling off the lower portion there with your cut measurement sizes on in clear polypropylene and that's very very solid also I've noticed that if you look in here you can see that that's that's gapped that's actually an inner portion and an outer portion um, which means rather because it's not solid should you wish, this is actually just slightly smaller at the base but it widens up a little bit um, and because it's not uh, solid what you could do is take a hacksaw to this section just here underneath the shoulder all the way around and actually still slot that portion into your aeropress if you wish to do so. So that's an interesting feature, it's worthy of note. So the base unscrews, which is another thing I like about this one, unlike the Polex, it actually screws on so it holds quite firm. And as I say, that's just a nice sturdy polypropylene base. And then under here, we have the ceramic burrs, the inner and outer burr, and then the adjusting collar, which is like a, a three-armed nut, and it has little notches underneath um, that click as you rotate it. You turn it clockwise, to push the burrs closer together to give you a finer grind. You turn it anti-clockwise to move the burrs further apart to give you a coarser grind. So what I'm going to do now is just have a quick look through the instructions and then we're going to actually disassemble the mill so you can see all of the working components of it. Um, and then I'll reassemble it and I'm going to put it on a setting of about six clicks which seems to be about about the sort of average most people say they use for espresso and I'm going to grind some lovely roasted coffee beans that we have here and I'm going to grind some of those through it and we'll have a look at the grind so <clears throat> on the front of the instructions um, it's, it gives you um, a bit of a synopsis, designed for compact storage, ceramic burr, the burr can be decomposed and washed with water or taken apart and washed. Um, it has a scale to define the amount of ground coffee, the one and two cup scale on the front. On the first page inside we have a, an exploded diagram showing all of the components in Japanese and in English. On the centre portion we have a piece showing you how to adjust for the grind and then a product care underneath how to how to take it apart and clean it and then on the third portion this gives you a scale of the grind types um, and what you would use them for which is kind of handy things like your uh, your french press your cafetiere your uh, drip filter espresso etc and it gives you a rough idea of how coarse or fine the grinds should be which is a good starting point uh, instructions above on how to use it um, and then on the back some handling precautions um, uh, do not let children use this product do not use next to a child and keep out of reach of children Hario doesn't like children near their products bear this in mind people um, but yes just common sense stuff so you know it tells you uh, don't over tighten the the burr adjustment because you'll get the actual burrs rubbing against one another and they'll wear out um, and that kind of thing and, and just generally how to look after it so that's that what we're going to do now is move those aside and we're going to take this thing apart so the base unscrews we'll pop that over here 
clear lid pops off we'll pop that over here and then what we're left with is the the spindle this is the bit that does all the work really um, and you'll see that it's really not that complicated now you have to hold the top spindle uh, securely in place. Now there are two ways you can just hold that hold that with your fingers or if you suspect it's quite tight for some reason you can just pop this handle on and use that to hold it and then you turn this nut. Now because it's got a spring pushing that inner burr out you can hear that clicking well you can if I shut up and let you um, so that gives you an idea of, uh, of how it adjusts and maintains its adjustment. Now what I'm doing here is um, while I'm unscrewing this I'm just pressing down on the spring loaded uh, burr just so that um, I'm not putting any unnecessary wear on the click adjustment. So we'll undo this nut completely. That goes on there. The inner burr complete with the plastic collar comes away like so and that's the shape of the inner burr. Let's see if I can get that to focus for you. There you go. And it's got a very fine sort of uh, teeth down here and channels which, which move your beans um, down for grinding. This plastic portion will push out, but uh, I, could, I, I really need sort of two hands for that. But that's, part, that's one part of your ceramic burr. The other portion, the outer part of the burr is there. And you can see it's got locating pegs which fit into locating dowels inside there. And that's the actual grinding teeth of the burr, if you can see that, hopefully you can. And we then have the tension spring, which is stainless steel. And at this point, the entire handle can actually be removed, the spindle, um, taking care not to lose the nylon nut, which is actually inside there. And there's a nylon nut on that side as well. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So the whole thing will come apart quite easily for you to, uh, to clean it. Um, I don't know if it's dishwasher safe, but uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's if it's sort of you know top shelf dishwasher safe. Um, so you clean it, make sure it's all nice and nice and dry and what have you, and then reassemble it in uh, very much the same manner. So as you took it apart, so the outer burr followed by the inner burr, and you'll notice there's a little slot in there, and that corresponds to a little slot on the on the spindle but you can see there the spring loading and then the nut you'll notice on one side has these little notches try and get that to focus for you and on the other side it doesn't so it needs to go with the notches facing down to correspond with the notches on this plastic piece here and then what I'm going to do is wind this all the way in to begin with. Again pressing down just to so that I'm not uh, needlessly wearing on the plastic there. Um, so I wound that all the way in until it's stopped. That's as far as it will go. So I'm going to take it back one click. I'm going to turn this back so it's six clicks out. One, two, one, two, three, four, six. So that's um, that's now six clicks out. So we're going to pop the lid back on, we're going to pop the base back on and the handle there and that's ready to go so take the lid off and we're going to pop in some beans
setting stuff. So lid on, handle on nice and firm, take a good hold. And I've got to say this is actually incredibly effortless, surprisingly so. And you can see the grind in the bottom there coming out. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion that's probably a little bit too coarse for, um, for the espresso grind that I'm looking for. Uh, so I think I'm... I think I will need to actually wind that in a little bit, but we'll just grind a wee bit more and see. Let's see if we can actually see the grinds falling if I hold it like so. Maybe not, it's probably it's tricky to see, but um, hmm. So, in a nutshell, there you have it. Basically, you have to play about with the settings, just like any grinder. You, you have to dial it in to suit the application that you're going to use it for. Um, what I'm going to do is grind the rest of these and I'm going to throw them through my, um, my air press and, and see what kind of coffee that makes me. And, um, and then I will certainly be having a play with an espresso grind and, uh, and trying some different pieces, diff different um, degrees of grind to see what, uh, what I can achieve. <laughs> 